Today I'm going to explain to you how the parking brake works on your car. Unlike conventional brakes, parking brakes are mechanically activated and run through a cable down to the rear wheels. And if you follow that cable down, it actually goes down the center console and down underneath the transmission tunnel underneath the airbag computer. And now if you follow that e-brake line underneath the vehicle, it goes under the transmission tunnel here to the splitter and that basically splits the left side and the right side and it goes out to each respective wheel. Now the parking brake typically actuates the rear wheels of the car and prevents it from rolling when you park on a hill. Watch when I actuate it while rolling forward. Now some vehicles have two different types of actuators, the foot brake and the hand brake. Now at the rear they're the same where we have the two separate lines joining at the T connector before it goes into the body. Once inside we have an extended line that goes underneath the dashboard for the foot brake whereas the hand brake just has a very small patch line. Now there's four 12 millimeter nuts that hold this parking brake assembly to the firewall. Now here we have the adjustment nut that I'm going to remove. And now I can remove the parking brake handle assembly. Here we have the entire rear subframe removed from the vehicle and the e-brake cable that leads up to it. So just follow the e-brake cable all the way over to the wheel here and remove the brake assembly to see what's going on inside. So here we've got the entire parking brake system removed from the vehicle. Starting here with the foot brake actuator. We've got the cable and the splitter that goes out to the two rear knuckles. We have the parking brake assembly as well as the hub that supports the disc and the drum that goes around here. Now as rusty as it is, the rear parking brake is housed in this drum on the rotor and will therefore constrain the rear wheels from turning when engaged. Now when the rotor is removed, we have the hub which supports it and the wheel and we have the parking brake assembly that goes around it and rides up inside of the drum here. Now to have a closer look, I'm going to remove the hub from the knuckle. Now the parking brake is just a drum brake that's manually actuated by a cable instead of a traditional wheel cylinder. Now in this parking brake assembly, we have the shoes on the outside here that contact the drum, this one having friction material that's literally falling apart. We have the adjuster and the adjuster spring. We have the return spring as well as the retainer actuator that gets actuated by the parking brake cable that comes in through the back. Parking brake cable for this side will then go into the back here. We've also got these two retaining pins and respective springs that form the pivot point for these two shoes as they slide against the drum. And since it's a little difficult to demonstrate by hand, I'm going to remove this return spring. Now when the pedal or handle pulls on the parking brake, it's going to pull it back and that's going to cause this retainer here to expand outward, pushing the shoes against the drum outward like that. If I release this retainer here, you can see how it's connected with this extra lever arm to the parking brake cable. Now in the closed position, this sits like this, but when the parking brake cable pulls, it's going to expand this joint here, which is going to push these two point outward against the shoes. I'm going to remove the retainer pins. And I'll rotate this one. And now I can remove the shoe assembly from the backing plate. Now the parking brake shoes has a riveted on friction material and when this reaches about a millimeter thick it's time to replace the entire shoe assembly. Now the adjuster here is allowed to rotate in order to set the static position of these shoes relative to the inner diameter of the drum. Now typically you'd install this drum over top the shoe assembly with the adjuster in its minimum position and then access the star wheel through this grommet over here to adjust it until there's a slight drag and the parking brake engages firmly. Now the adjuster is just a simple turnbuckle assembly that telescopes back and forth and rotates in order to adjust its free length. The return spring is just there to keep it all together from falling apart. Now since the parking brake mechanism works against the back plate, there are six points of contact that need to be well lubricated. Now if I follow the cables from the knuckle, I come to the splitter over here that takes the input from the cabin actuator and splits it to the two rear wheels. Now at the front, the single cable is actuated by this foot brake actuator that pulls on the cable when you step on the brake. Now at the foot brake, we have the cable that will come around the foot lever here to an adjustment nut. Now this nut is where you can adjust how far the pedal travels before it engages the parking brakes. And with this adjustment nut tightened, when I actuate the parking brake, you can see how the cable is then wrapped around the foot lever here to increase tension to activate the parking brakes. Now the parking brake actuator uses a ratcheting mechanism to engage, lock, and disengage the parking brake. You can see that mechanism inside of there. We have the main pivot point in the middle here and its return spring. There's also a normally open switch here for the indicator light on the dashboard. And at the back here we have the bump stop. Now this entire thing is held together by three main rivets that I'm gonna grind off so we can have a closer look. And with that you can see just how the ratcheting mechanism works. Spring pressure is gonna hold this tooth here against these teeth on the lever. And as you engage the lever, it locks it in. Now when you wanna unlock it, you just have to move it slightly. Then this white piece is going to kick out and that's going to unlock the mechanism back to the zero position. And that's pretty much how the parking brake system works on your car. Make sure you follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes footage. 
and subscribe for more videos just like this one. Listen to how crummy this worn wheel bearing sounds.